Red Alert. Red Alert. Red Alert. Ooh, Red Alert. I gotta get under my school desk. <laughs> Tells you how old I am. Anyway, hey guys, Gantry Crane, Hunter's Point. Uh, really cool. Let's take a look at this beautiful, beautiful big piece of iron. This thing was built originally to uh, swap out turrets on battleships. How cool is that? Um, I'll link a description in the video to some history on this crane, but you know, I'm not a historian. I just want to talk about the flight and the color and, and you know, some beautiful, you know, quick points on this crane and the property. Um, this, like I say, this took some planning to get to this crane because it is, um, uh, not an easy one to, to get to. Uh, oddly enough, there was, and the whole reason I came out here and decided to do this was because there was no, uh, airspace authorization needed up to 400 AGL. I was really stoked about that. And I was really surprised because there are two overlapping airspaces, B and C, uh, right here. But, um, it's... I was like, wow, that's really incredible. Um, so anyway, I decided to go out and fly this, man, and I'm really glad that I did. Look at this. There's some historic pictures online uh, showing that those, um, you know, slips of water there uh, next to those, uh, you know, those dry docks full of battleships and people, uh, soldiers, and, you know, uh, gosh, man, it's just some really incredible uh, old photos showing this crane in action um, that part on top was later added i think in 1959 or 57 i forget what i read but it was put on there uh to retrieve missiles uh the polaris missile what they would do is they would launch them out in uh, launch them out and they would fall into the bay and they'd retrieve them from the bottom of the bay floor uh i guess whoever come up with that nick and poop idea <laughs> uh, somebody got a better way. Let's attach this, you know, little A-frame up here on top, attach some tethers to the missile, fire it out there, and then retrieve it. Um, so anyway, I was going to fly through this, but I decided not to. It was not the responsible thing to do, and I try to be responsible uh, when I fly, and I try to not be reckless and needlessly endanger uh, my drone. Um, they're not cheap. And I just try to be responsible with it. But look at how incredible this is. And also the Phantom 4, sometimes it does better on some days than others when you're up close to metal. Some days I've got no problem. Other days it's like, you know, it doesn't even want to do it. So I just, I keep a good distance and I, and I try to, you know, uh, keep in mind that, you know, some days it acts wonky with metal. Um, but look at this as I come around. All that texture and all that beautiful color in that steel and the sunlight. Gosh, this is just really a pretty spot. I've got the Bay Bridge back there in the distance and some tankers out there on the water. Man, just a beautiful place, man. A beautiful view. San Francisco in the skyline back there. Incredible. Let's take a look at uh, a couple of these other structures that were near the crane that uh, I, you know flew to. I don't know what this was, but it was just lit really beautifully with the um, low sun in the sky. You can see the nice soft long shadows. Uh, definitely, you know, a uh, golden hour here. Phantom 4 did a beautiful job, man. I had no issues with it. You know, uh, I just, you can't knock that camera. For all the, for all the little things that the Phantom 4 could improve on, being that it's an older technology drone, you just can't knock that camera, man. That camera is a fantastic camera. You know, my son has the Mavic Pro. And, you know, for all the things that I like about the Mavic Pro, the camera, uh, it's you can't top the Phantom, the Phantom 4. <laughs> I just love the camera. We joke about it. It's a flying uh, file cabinet or a flying briefcase because it's so huge. But the camera and the gimbal, give you this type of imagery. It's just really, really pretty, man. Let's fly over the top of this building. I don't know what it was. Um, some sort of industrial gases or heating or whatever. I don't know. Uh, there's a big tank in the back that we're going to take a look at the top of. It's got some, you know, high pressure, uh, you know, uh, caps and 
big strong bolts and stuff holding in uh, some gases or you know whatever it used to go through those tanks uh you know old roofs the skylight is open there the the roof access port is open up there i'm sure people have been in here um it's such a long ways out i don't even know you'd have to even if you did uh go out there without permission i don't know how it would take you forever to get out there it's so far out <laughs> you'd spend a week walking out there but uh just really cool look at all the you know the detail and the clarity that the camera on this phantom 4 picks up you know and as i come back up with the camera here in just a second you're going to see just how huge this place was and you know this place brought back lots of the hot uh, radioactive equipment that was uh, used in the Marshall Islands testing, the Bikini Atoll and stuff like that. They dropped these huge bombs out there and just ruined the entire place. Those people will never be able to go back to their islands. Uh, and a lot of that equipment was brought back here. Um, and who knows what happened with it. It's a, it's a mystery. Um, as with any good... Uh, story involving the government <laughs> there's lots of mystery uh you know in there and uh, let your imaginations run wild with it but beautiful sunlight here gorgeous color you know sun is setting and uh you know i appreciate you guys watching like and subscribe uh, share my videos folks uh check me out on instagram at insightful underscore imagery facebook also my webpage, insightfulimagery.com. Check out some really great drone footage and some art that you can buy and help support my channel. As we bring the camera back up uh, off into the setting sun, you know, you guys take care and uh, watch the next video when it comes out, man.